Hi. Now we're ready for type B calorimetry, constant volume calorimetry. In a previous video, we discussed what I call type A, which is constant pressure calorimetry. With constant volume calorimetry, we'll also be introduced to the idea that the instrument itself has its own heat capacity. We'll call it the heat capacity of the calorimeter. Let me just reintroduce you to calorimetry, and then we'll get to this constant volume calorimetry. I call it type A. And in a previous video, we discussed coffee cup calorimetry. And that is uh, the same as constant pressure. We're most familiar with this type of calorimetry. Most of the reactions that we do, there isn't really a change in the pressure. And in this setup, if there is an increase in pressure, it's easily released because we're not really capping the coffee cup or the styrofoam cup uh, very well. So while pressure can be released, uh, heat is trapped. It's an insulated container. Now the purpose of this uh, coffee cup calori calorimetry is to measure heat uh, and temperature changes. And we did an example where we put two uh, samples of water at different temperatures and we saw what the final temperature uh, was. So stuff you could calculate is values such as a TF. Um, we could calculate the specific heat capacity of a substance. Mm, uh, you know, sometimes you could calculate the mass depending on how much heat was uh, transferred, etc. In this video, let's take a look at a, a different type of calorimetry called uh, constant volume. The setup is using what's called a bomb calorimeter. And we're going to consider this constant volume because it is going to be uh, sealed. And the purpose of this is to measure the heat of combustion. That's a new term, I think, for most of us. Heat of, well, maybe not neat, uh, maybe not new, but we're going to look a little more carefully at this combustion reaction, and we're going to measure the heat, how much heat or energy is evolved when something is burning. <clears throat> Let me draw you the schematic or the cartoon of a bomb calorimeter. Uh, the first thing is you have uh, the bomb, and the bomb is the chamber in which the sample is is held. Um, I'll draw it like this. And we have to ignite it and burn it. So what do we need? We need an igniter. So we'll have a coil of wire connected to the ignition wires. And the ignition wires, black will be the negative terminal, uh, red is the positive, and these are your <clears throat> ignition wires. Your sample, I'll have in pink, is near or surrounding this ignition wire. What do you need for combustion? You need the gas oxygen. So this is pressurized with O2. Okay, next is the sample is going to be ignited and going to heat up a chamber of water that's surrounding it. Um, how do I want to draw this? Let me draw it like this. Here's your water chamber, H2O, 
and we need to be able to monitor it and stir it. We have this little doodad propeller that is just stirrer and it is possible to buy stirs that monitor temperature. So this is stir and temperature probe. Okay, is this constantly focusing? That's kind of annoying. Um, let me see if I could freeze it S static. Okay, the water will heat up. You measure the temperature. Now, again, everything is closed, and we're going to also insulate this water with a what do I want to call this? Let's call this an insulated jacket. Okay. Number one, the bomb. Oh, I didn't even label the bomb. The bomb uh, technically is this chamber right here. The bomb has a sample plus O2. Number two, sample is ignited. and we're running a combustion reaction. Number three, the heat produced by the reaction, combustion, is um, transferred to the bomb and water. You know, the, the bomb and the water, we're gonna consider as the calorimeter and let me put this, we'll call it the cal or calorimeter. That's this, we could think of it, it as the system, the system that's being heated up by the reaction. Okay. If we think about this contraption, the water and the bomb, as absorbing the energy from the reaction, then it's okay to think of it as the Q of the reaction. So the reaction is losing energy, okay, releasing energy. So that Q of reaction is negative. I want it to set, set it equal to the Q of the calorimeter. What does the heat, or what heat does the calorimeter absorb? And so the Q would be positive in this case. So to get these to be equal to each other, I will take the negative of the negative Q of the reaction, and that should be equal to the Q of the calorimeter. No heat is escaping. Any heat released by the reaction will be absorbed by the calorimeter, which in this case is going to be considered the bomb and the water together. Okay. Um, now, I mentioned that there's a new term called heat capacity of the calorimeter. We need to know how efficient this calorimeter absorbs the energy and how its temperature changes. That is technically the heat capacity. I'll put it here. Heat capacity. And in most problems where you have a bomb calorimetry, you'll be given the heat capacity of the calorimeter. Again, we are going to think of the calorimeter setup as the bomb and the water. And the abbreviation is C. Cal. Okay. Now let me write it here. C cal. So this is not specific heat. Remember, do you see that I did not say the word specific? Because the C cal is in a units of joules per degree C or kilojoules per degree C. Do you notice that it's not per gram? degree C. There is no gram term in this case. It doesn't matter what the size of the calorimeter is. I mean, they, what they do is, what scientists do is they take a standard that they know how much heat is produced and they measure the C cal of the calorimeter based off of that standard. 
and you get a CCAL for that calorimeter that can be used anytime you use that instrument. So again, this is heat capacity. There is uh, no gram, right? It's not uh, specific heat capacity. Not a big deal. I mean, you'll know by the units whether uh, you need to account for grams or not. But specific heat capacity, like for water, Cs for H2O, equals 4.18 uh, joules per gram dot degree C. So now we have uh, these two equations. And so when we think about what we can, how we can relate these two equations, or actually one's an equation, one is just showing the units, how do I use this uh, variable in equation? Maybe it's what I want to say. The Q of the reaction that is proceeding inside the bomb releases heat, and it's going to transfer to the calorimeter, and it's going to change its temperature. The temperature, and again, we'll say of the calorimeter setup, the water and the bomb. Now the thing is, um, this temperature difference, the temperature is going to rise. So the final is more than the initial. Hmm, is this going to work? Um, final minus initial. Yeah, I think this should work. Q of the reaction equals uh, heat capacity of the calorimeter, which is a positive. Right now, something's bugging me, but I'm not 100% sure what's bugging me. Final minus initial. OK, I'm going to leave it at this for now. I think. Uh, Whatever's bugging me, we're going to find out exactly what it is when we do the next problem. OK. Those are the equations we're going to use to solve this problem right here. Oh, you know what's, bu you know what's bugging me? The, the Q of the reaction is negative and this term is positive so to get this these to be equal to each other I gotta have a negative either here or a negative over here right because this this Q reaction is negative the reaction is releasing energy releasing heat okay I am whole again speaking of being whole again and finding um, my better half. In two days, it's Valentine's Day, and I want to calculate the energy content of this box of chocolates that I'm going to mail myself uh, to campus in a couple days. But I'm going to analyze only one piece. I'm hoping I'm hoping to limit myself to one piece. One piece of Valentine's Day chocolate has a mass of 45.0 grams. Interesting, that's a mass. When it is burned in a bomb calorimeter, the temperature of the water rises. Mm, so we have a delta T. The heat capacity of the calorimeter, ooh, we have a heat capacity. It's in kilojoules per degree C. What is this? For every 40 kilojoules of heat that's released, then absorbed by the calorimeter, it's going to rise one degree C. And I am going to count. I am going to consider this water as the calorimeter. What is the energy content? Okay. So when in doubt, you know, look at the units that you need. In question mark. So so we need, you know, maybe we're not going to get kilojoules per gram right away. Maybe we need to calculate these separately get a kilojoule amount and a gram amount. Now, I am going to do this with you, or you could pause the video and based on our equations, go ahead and do the calculations. Want to do that? Please pause. If not, you could follow my work. Okay. 
you have an answer or are you ready to take notes? We have Q reaction equals negative C cal heat capacity of the calorimeter and the change of it in its temperature. Okay, I think that's it. Um, we have this, so this is um, Q reaction. Oh, yeah, we don't know the energy released by the chocolates, energy or think of it as heat, equals heat capacity 40, oh, put a negative sign, 40.0 okay, kilojoules per degree C times the temperature change, final minus initial, 46.3 minus 21. Okay, keep it as Celsius because the difference um, doesn't matter if you change it to Kelvin or keep it as Celsius. 46.3 minus 21 equals a positive number uh, times 40 or negative 40. So the, the Q of the reaction equals negative 1012 what are the units? See the Celsius cancelled out. So this is kilojoules. But the energy content they wanted per gram. Okay. But we have this. So this is the idea where we take two uh, two values and we put them together. Almost like I don't know. If you try to dis if you're trying to calculate density, uh, you may not be able to get density straight from an equation. But if you know the mass and you know the volume, then you do you have grams per milliliter and you have the density. So all we have to do is um, divide it by grams. The idea though is that this is the amount uh, released. This is the change in the heat. Okay, so you you know the amount you release is positive. It's a it's it's a positive amount kilojoules. And then I am testing 45 grams of chocolate. Divided by 45, uh, 22.5 kilojoules per gram. Now, I don't know if that is very bad for my health or okay, because we know calories. So we, we've answered the problem, but now I'm kind of curious, what is the calories per chocolate question mark calories uh, per piece okay. and it's 45 grams the thing is just remember that calories on a nutritional label that's actually um, big C A L which is kilocalories so if you recall uh, this term calories is actually big C A L and that equals um, one kilocal or a thousand calories little c. Oh you don't see that. Okay. I I think we'll know whether we're on the right track once we see the final answer. Um, let me start out with this is a conversion in my mind, so let me start out with data. And the data is forty five point oh grams because that's one piece of chocolate. I want it on top. Oh, this is interesting. Uh, yeah, I want it on top because I need to figure out calories. I want to cancel out these grams. Okay, 45.0 grams of chocolate times 22.5 kilojoules per gram. So I'm getting the kilojoule amount of one piece of chocolate times, let's get rid of Oh, we need a conversion. Um, what was it? It was one cal little c equals 4.184. So this is, uh, I, I usually include that last digit, four um, joules. Okay, so let's convert this into joules. Get rid of kilojoules. So one kilojoule equals one times 10 to the three joules. Remember what kind of notation this is? This is called 
exponential notation. So I know a lot of students would rather say a thousand joules uh, per, sorry, yeah, a thousand joules per one kilojoule, um, but I'll use exponents times. Let me figure out how far I've got in grams, kilojoules. Oh, there we go, cals. Um, one cal, little c, 4.184 joules. Now the thing is, if I get this cal, I really need this big cal. So times one big cal Give me one second. Oh, 1,000. Oh, no. Yeah, 1,000 little cal. 1,000. Oh. I don't know if this is going to work, guys. Let's see. Joules go away, cals go away, and then we're left with that. So let's see if this answer is reasonable for one piece of chocolate. 45 times 22.5. Uh, just a little tip. Um, I use this calculator. I don't use one of those giant graphing calculators. I always press enter after each operation. I think that helps avoid errors. 45 times 22.5, enter. That number saved. Times 1 times 10 to the 3, enter. That number saved. Divided by 4.184. That number looks huge so far. Um, that number saved. Divided by 1,000. OK. Oh, right. It's uh, 242 calories. That sounds reasonable. 242, um, and then it's the nutritional calorie, which we know as a big C, which is really a thousand uh, calories, little c. But this is the this is the value for one piece of chocolate. So I will be eating. Sunday, along with my bottle of red wine, uh, more than one piece of chocolate. Uh, so that is this combined with the previous video or videos. That is calorimetry. I promise you, maybe later after we finish unit uh, one, I promise you a couple more challenging calor calorimetry problems. But for now, um, be sure you're able to do something like this and. You all have a very good uh, Valentine's Day. Hopefully I'll see many of you in organic chemistry and then we could talk about the chemistry and the biology of these uh, love chemicals. All right, let's see you.